Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce methods in C Sharp. Let's talk about what is a method. Well, a method is a reusable block of code. A method is syntax that allows us to put statements inside a container, and that, that container can be used again and again. The method syntax is used is defined inside a class. So we create we can create multiple methods inside a class, um, and these methods can be used by each other. So a method can call another method to use it. Sometimes methods require values to be, be passed into them, and some methods return a value. Because methods are these independent blocks of code, there needs to be a mechanism to pass values in between them. And the way that works is, here I have a, a graphic that describes a, a method as just a box of, of code, a box of statements. And all methods are going to have a pair of parentheses attached to the name. These parentheses are where values are passed into the method, so the method can do its job. Then when some methods, when they are done doing their job, they are going to return a value. So here I have the little door opening off the back of a method, and when the method is done, it's, a value is coming out of it. So we can't see potentially inside the method. We might not know how it works or what it does, but if we know what data needs to be passed into it, oh, excuse me, if we know what data needs to be passed into it, and we know what data is coming out of it, then we know how to use the method. All right, let's look at method syntax here. And I'm going to jump between two slides as we are talking through this. So a method is defined in two pieces. First, we have something called the method header. And the method header consists of access modifiers, a return type, an identifier, and input parameters. And then we have a code block attached to the method header. And this code block defines the method body. The method body contains all of the statements that execute some work, and then potentially a return statement if that method returns a value. And so let's talk about each of these pieces. First, we will look at access modifiers. Well, an access modifier defines how or where the method can be used. For the these next set of videos, we are going to be focusing on static met the static access modifier. So static means that the method is called from the class in which it was defined. This is opposed to non-static methods that are called from instances of a class, but we will get to that later. All right. After the access modifiers comes a return type. All methods must have a return type. The return type describes what type of data is returned from the method. A method can only return a single type of data. So maybe a method will return an integer, or maybe a method will return a string. But a method can't return an integer and a string. If a method does not return a value, then the return type void is used. So the void return type in a method indicates that a method does not return a value. After the return type, we, we must give our method an identifier. The identifier is just the name of our method. Typically, methods by convention uh, begin with a capital letter. And usually, methods have some type of action word. For example, write line, read line, read key. These names um, are describing work that is being done. All right, and then after the identifier, we have a pair of parentheses. And inside these parentheses come input parameters. Now, input parameters are just variables that are declared and ready to hold values that are passed from the outside world. Input parameters must have a data type and an identifier, just like a variable. For example, int age. We will look at how uh, input parameters are used in a little bit. All right, so once we define the modifiers, the return type, give our method a name, and, and identify what values must be passed into the method in order for the method to do its work, then we are going to attach a code block, write the statements that does our task, and then finally have a return statement. Now the return statement is where we exit from our method. So a return statement is required inside all methods that return a value. If a method doesn't return a value, 
then when you get to the end of the code block of the method body, the return statement is implied. You're returning back to wherever you were called from uh, without any value attached. All right, let's talk about how you call a static method. So calling a method means how do we use the method? Typically, a method is called from another method. In order to call a static method, you have to have the full path to the method name. So methods are defined inside classes. Classes are defined inside namespaces. So if you want to use the method from another class in another namespace, you have to specify the full path to that method. So you would type the namespace name, then have a dot, followed by the class name, followed by a dot, followed by the method name. If the method requires values to be passed into it, then you must include those values as part of the method call. In the calling method, those values that are passed into a method are called arguments. So arguments of a method are just the values that are passed into the method from the calling method. So for example, if main wanted to call and use the right line method, the right line method requires a string value to be passed into it. So in main, we would call the right line method from the console class from the system namespace, and we would pass the argument, the string value, hello world. Now there are some exceptions that we will allow us to get away from having to always type the namespace in class in front of the method name. So for example, if you are using the method inside the same namespace in which it was defined, then you don't have to include the namespace. You're already, think of it as the class is already a local class to your project. So if, if you are using a method that is defined inside a class, inside the same namespace that you are working, then you just need to say the different class name, then the method name. If a method is used in the same class as which the method is defined, then the class name doesn't need to be included. So you can call, if I'm in my program class in main, and I define a, a, my main method in my program class, and a, a new static method in my program class, I can call my static method inside the same class just by typing its name. Let's look at an example of what happens when we call a method and pass values into the method. So let's pretend above this dashed line, I'm in my main method. And then below the dashed line, I've defined a method, a brand new method. So methods are not defined inside other methods. They are defined outside of one another, but inside classes. So in my method def de definition here, I have a method header that tells me the following information. This is a static method, so I can call the method just by typing its name. The return type of this method is an integer. So this method is telling whoever is using it that it, it is going to return an integer value. The name of the method is getSum. So when I want to use the method, I just type the name. Inside the parentheses, I have defined two input parameters, two integer input parameters, one I named x, one I named y. The input parameters are full variable declarations, so I have a data type tied with an identifier. And if you need multiple input parameters, you separate them by commas. Inside my method body, I am doing some work here. I'm taking whatever value is stored in x and whatever value is stored in y. I'm adding them together and saving them into a new variable inside my getSum method. This new variable is called total, and it is type int. Then I have my return statement. I want to return the calculated total value. Now, because my method says it returns an integer, and I am returning an integer variable, my method is doing what it says. Okay, it's following its own rules. So let's look at what happens when we call this method. When I call the getSum method in main, I just type its name. I have my pair of parentheses. And here in main, I am passing two arguments. I am passing the value 13, which is an integer value. And I'm passing the variable x, which contains an integer value. So I'm passing two integer values, two integer value arguments into the method. These methods are going to be stored into the input parameters that are defined. So I've declared the input parameter variable int x, 
it's going to hold the value 13 when I call the method. Input parameter y is going to store the value stored in x, which is currently 10. So x is going to be 13 in my getSum method, y is going to be 10. Now notice I have a variable int x in main, and I have an input parameter variable int x in my getSum method. All methods are independent blocks of code. Therefore, any variables declared inside a method only exist inside that method. So this int x defined in main is completely different than the int x defined in my getSum method. Okay, and that is one thing that is very important to understand, that just because a variable has the same name in one method and the other, that the value is not automatically passed between methods. We have to pass the values very explicitly, sorry, um, through our syntax here. All right, so if this little image over here on the right shows what happens when the getSum method, after it does its calculation, calculates the result and returns the value 23, so the sum of 13 and 10 is 23, I'm returning 23 to main, we can see that the method, you can pretend it is just replaced with the return value. So after the getSum method executes, our code might look like this. I have the value 23 that was returned from the method. I can now save that value into a variable in main and use it going forward. All right, and then I could, I could call getSum method again and again as needed. All right, let's wrap up this video. Why do we use methods? Well, methods are useful in many ways. Uh, first of all, methods can help us organize our code. Instead of writing a long program that maybe has thousands of lines of code, if we break our code into smaller groups of statements that do specific tasks and put those statements inside a method, then we can create an application that just uses or calls these other method pieces. Therefore, our application code is going to shrink. Even though we're just moving code around and putting them in these blocks, um, the logic of our application can be significantly uh, organized. Methods also allow the reuse of code blocks. If I put a block of code inside a method, I can then call that method again and again and again and execute the statements inside the method without having to write the statements again and again. For example, our protected prompt text, you know, takes 10 to 15 lines of code to implement. If I were to put those lines of code inside a prompt method, then whenever I wanted to use the prompt method, I would just call the prompt method. And so I could, I could turn a repeated 10 line process into a single line process. Methods can help encapsulate a difficult task or, or a task or a confusing block of code. So for example, let's say in your program you were doing some you know, very, very large formula calculation, and as you're trying to organize your application code, you get to this, this tricky part. If you were to put that tricky part inside a method and you made sure that that method was working properly, then in your application code you could just say, you know, int x is equal to do the complicated work, pass in the values you need, get the result. All right, methods can help with hiding implementation. So for example, let's say you had two people working on a project. Maybe one person was writing some methods that involved with uh, connecting to a database and they were hiding some code inside there. And then the, the second developer was just trying to write an application that would make a connection to a database. Well, they could just, if, as long as they know the methods that will, the method names that will make the connection, they could just call the method names without worrying about how that implementation was, uh, was coded. And then also methods can help with code maintenance. So if you have to debug someone else's code, it is much easier to try to debug um, a, a block of code that is inside a method that is maybe focused on doing one specific task than trying to go through a many thousand line program and trying to figure out, okay, where is something failing? All right. so. In the following videos, we are going to do several examples in building uh, void methods, which don't return a value, a value returning methods, overloaded methods, etc.